mechanics at this point that needs to be discussed further with the commissioner and with other staff about at what point was the latest possible point for the legislature to enact funding for this state fiscal year 13 that we can then make payments appropriately beginning June 12th when we start to run out. Yes. I'm sorry, Commissioner, you have me back there. When did you know that, that May 28th would be that date that you're talking about of the site of this, the process from the budget office being 12 days or so? When did you know that May 28th was the date that we were looking at? This has been within the last uh, week or so. Certainly as we were putting together the change package and working with uh, the budget office on our request, we, we are daily and weekly evaluating our accounts, our forecast, uh, determining whether or not there are any additional revenues coming in. We most recently, this past week, were looking at the June 12th cycle to understand how much do we now forecast we will be short, and then backing in, what does that then mean, either in terms of, as I've said, our own internal decision making about what changes we would have to make to payments, or when a budget would need to be adopted in order to fund these accounts. So, so when the change package came out of the 8th, you knew that May 28th was likely to be the day? This is not difficult timing in terms of the, there's just, there's just not a lot of time between now and the end of the fiscal year. And I, I understand, and that's, and, and that's, we are here all years, at this point, six days a week, working uh, up to 14 hours a day, we understand and, and are focused perfectly on passing a budget that, um, that our constituents will be proud of. Um, my question, again, is about kind of when you know and how this is communicated. What I'm interested in as we're moving forward here, um, you've talked about a number of different, of, as you call it, mechanics uh, in the department, the unexpended balances of non bank here, accounts, other revenues, I'm sure you talked to, there's others. When can we get a report back of, of what, of the granularity of what that's gonna mean and whether or not the $1.6 million still holds true as we're approaching. Is that something we can expect Tuesday or Wednesday of this week? Well, the change package is that final analysis as we've been looking right. at our funds. We've been we've been working uh, nonstop looking at what are the options available to us. Uh, that is what led up to the change package. That is the funding that is needed in order to offset those losses at the remainder of the year. Commissioner, I understand completely. The change package is how the legislature appropriates the funds that you have to manage. You're talking about, when you're talking about unexpended balances and non care accounts, you're referring, I believe, to Part U. When you're talking about other revenue, drug rebates, you're talking about other ways in which the department gets money into OSR accounts that then offsets federal requirements for main care. When you're talking about changes to payments, you're talking about what may happen on the outflows. This is all cash flow management. Cash flow management backs you into the May 28th date. I'm asking for an update on the cash flow management that, you, that is ongoing as you've made clear you are so that we understand whether or not this letter that, that is not a typical communication from the department to this committee, whether that holds true or whether these other options have, have found the $1.6 million in May 28th becomes June 4th. Every week you get a very detailed analysis of the weekly cycle payments. From the legislative and staff. No, well, we send it to the legislative staff. So that's our document. Every week we send over. That is a detailed analysis of the cycle payments. So I guess I'm happy to expand upon that, but, but we do provide significant information every week so that Absolutely. you have the depth of understanding of what we are looking at for our cash management uh, related to the expenditures in main care. So we can get a, another briefing of how you are approaching this challenge that you have, that we all agree that you have, on Tuesday or Wednesday of some of the details of these unexpended balances and other revenue opportunities that you may have that will push the May 28th date to June 4th? No. The analysis that we have done to date about what is available to us is what contributes still, though, to running out of money June 12th for that cycle. So these mechanics that you're talking about, the unexpended balances and other revenue, is, I'm confused, because you're saying the, we went out of date period on June 10th or somewhere in there, but you're saying that the department's looking at other options 
that could affect that. I'm not sure. What I said was that we've been looking and managing this. This is what we do every week, every day. We have meetings reviewing the status of all these accounts. And that it is that exercise that led to the request for the $35 million, based upon all of the other efforts that we have underway to manage, to forecast other accounts and expenditures, based upon constant review of what we're seeing in the other accounts. And I'm happy to share with you what those other accounts and challenges look like in terms of what we've identified. And that's what I'm asking for more specifics. And is Tuesday a reasonable date to get more specifics about this $1.6 million? In terms of the, again, you have a lot of that. But we'll bring you, we'll take a look compared to what we've provided. The $1 million department and one initiative in a change package that provides very, that says increased costs due to SACL payments is not sufficient communication to say, here's how it was developed and we know that this continues to be true two weeks after the change package was delivered. But Representative Carey, that would suggest that we have not provided this committee with reams of data and information, which we have. And we have provided you with substantial background information regarding the spending, the budget, and our forecast. I'm happy to provide more detail about the non-main care accounts that we are using as a part of the language and the authority that we were granted. But you also have seen some of that information in your financial orders. We will provide you with more detail behind that. Thank you. Is Tuesday a reasonable date for that? We're happy to provide that to you on Tuesday. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Senator Flick. Thank you again, Madam Chair. I had just a couple other things to say. I'm going to repeat myself from before and I won't apologize for that. I think a couple of the commissioners in this room have the hardest jobs in state government. And I think they're trying their best to provide a service that is required of them. And as I look at this day and this meeting and the challenges of this discussion, it seems like the factors are factors that are, again, fixable by our committee. I think that maybe a communication or two caught us off guard. Again, I'll say that that's not the first time that's happened to this committee. And again, people are trying to be offering as much disclosure as possible. And I don't think I have to mention to the committee, but I'm mentioning it for other people who might listen to us, is that our job is to stay focused, collaborative, calm, work something out. Because other people and other factors that surround us will be trying to divide us, to torment us, to make us get all political and crazy. And I don't think we lend ourselves to doing that here. We seem to be able to work very well to just deal with the facts and the issues at hand and get them accomplished. So I think that bears repeating. I'm very proud of the committee today for the questions I've asked, the straightforward, direct questions. And the commissioners answered them in a straightforward, direct way. I think that's all good. I think there is some potential free board in the dates that have been assigned. And I guess if I was in the commissioner's shoes, I'd certainly give the earliest date possible to protect the interests of the department and the providers and so forth. I understand that. And again, I don't think that's different than requests that we've received in the past. The fact that it's in a letter form, I think, is a little different. But again, I hope we can get past that. What has to happen here, I think, is that we need to get authorization to develop a supplemental budget in one form or another. Then it has to pass the committee. It has to go to revisers to be fixed. It has to be on the floor of the Senate and the House and receive passage and get a signature. All that takes a little time. And there's always a lot of flop in that scheduling that is flexible. And I think that if we talk to Commissioner Miller about that, if we talk to the budget director about that, we could probably get a clearer signal about the time frames. My guess is that they're a little looser than a letter form. But I think that's the way it should be. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.
letter might indicate, but I think um, it's probably good that we've had the discussion today to make sure that we're, we're, we're moving as fast as we might need to. So uh, I, I hope that when we're, we're done questioning uh, Commissioner Mayhew, we have a chance to talk to Commissioner Millett about the, the date sequencing that may be possible that perhaps puts us a little more at ease. Um, that, I just wanted to say that. Representative Flood. Representative Keshel? Yes, and uh, again, I, I thank the Senator Flood for coming to I, I have to express that I don't feel that I was, I'm, I'm being caught off the guard as much as other people may feel. But I do want to say that this is an interesting opportunity to just make a follow up following statement or, or comment. And that is, over the last couple of weeks, your staff has been over here explaining how you're trying to project future funding to avoid this very kind of issue, this crisis to crisis kind of situation that we've faced for all, lots of reasons over the past year. And I want to appreciate, uh, express my appreciation to your staff for the hard work that they're doing on the modeling and all of that that tells us what you will need for funding. Not to say that it'll, you'll, you'll never get, uh, have a need for a supplemental budget in the future, but certainly to avoid that to the extent possible. And I, I think your staff has worked hard. I've talked to them. Uh, Post those kind of online conversations. I think we're doing an excellent job, and hopefully, we will start listening to the staff and accepting their projections to the extent that we can without trying to pull them back and then potentially getting into a funding problem for the next year. Because we're always looking for money on this committee to help solve problems, and I understand that. And we want to get as precise as we can, but sometimes, we, in order to get out of these kinds of fiscal issues, these crisis issues, uh, we need to make sure that we're doing the ex uh, doing full funding to the extent possible to the extent our knowledge will allow us. And I just want to make that comment. Thank you. Representative Kishel, thank you. And I, I am equally impressed and appreciative of the work of uh, many, many staff in the department. Um, they have spent countless hours. Uh, it is complicated. It does require a great deal of analysis and predictive analysis. And um, they have worked collaboratively within the department, um, with the Department of Administration and Financial Services, pouring over uh, their analysis to really ensure, at the end of the day, that we're able to meet the needs and cover the costs of this program. And they have been the ones who have taken the phone calls from providers um, when their payments uh, have not been laid or a claim has not been paid and the challenges that they face may, meaning payroll and we are trying our best to avoid that so that we can ensure that appropriate payments are made for the remainder of the fiscal year. But thank you for your comments. Thank you. I, um, I, I would encourage uh, committee members who haven't looked at the letters um, to do so and, and again my concern is that as a chair of this committee, that no one notify us of a May 28th date, and um, that's two weeks away. And in order for us on this committee to do our job, and as Senator Flood pointed out, there are ways to deal with this. We have to be informed, and um, we need we need to be um, told um, that funding will run out in two weeks if in that in fact is the situation and, it, and it's not acceptable to find out at five o'clock on a Friday afternoon um, in a letter that didn't even come to us um, here on appropriations. So um, communications is a, is a significant issue and uh, I hope going forward that uh, you know not only informing people uh, as you have been in terms of your concerns about um, how much money is there for Medicaid, but that if we're facing a crisis, as we have indicated, that money is going to run out in two weeks, that this committee be informed so that we can take appropriate action and we don't find out, you know, through a letter that didn't even come to us that, that we're facing this situation. I believe you were informed. 
have been informed, so we disagree about whether or not um, there's been effective communication with this committee. share with you that um, I feel very protective of this committee as you do for your department. We are under tremendous pressure as well. And I place no blame for it, but um, last week I was, just to give you an idea of how I think maybe some of the other committee members may be working under such pressure. I went home finally after two weeks of not being home. And I, I went over to my mail and there was a card there it was a happy anniversary for my mother-in-law to my husband and myself. And I read it and I thought, good Lord, this is my anniversary. Um, I'm just so caught up with appropriations that um, I think it's clear what we're doing here. And I suspect that's the case for another, a number of other members. So um, I'm just asking in terms of going forward, and you may not be the appropriate party to ask, but whether it's Commissioner Millett or yourself, anyone who feels a crisis is coming and we're not moving at a fast enough pace, please do not hesitate to call me any time because all reminders are very welcome. And um, I just think everyone here is really trying to do a good job and under huge pressure from so many different avenues. Thank you. Ring my cake. Administratively achieved 
multiple, if not dual, tracks of forecasting the need, looking at that 1.9 hospital push that was not clearly dealt with, and arriving at a 33, a 35.3 total, 33.3 on the cycles, 1.9 on the hospitals, that we, and with the governor's clear message, do not want to push. We do not want to see those bills go unpaid before this fiscal year is out. There were two other issues, and I made my point here as clearly as I could. We had done our best to meet the indigent legal assignment to us, but we needed another million dollars. That issue will start to ripen very soon, too. Uh, we have sent to the governor and he has processed two financial orders that get us through May. But we're getting into June very quickly, and we're in a need to deal with that issue. We have the milk issue that you heard about on Friday, and we know that that's an issue that's very timely for the farmers involved and cannot wait uh, for uh, action to, to occur after June because it will be untimely for the need. There was one other piece that is language driven, but which the governor and the Board of Corrections and the sheriffs have talked, and that is the ability in the language piece to allow the Department of Corrections to self-fund about $800,000 of needs at the uh, regional Board of Corrections level in order for those regional uh, jail entities to pay their bills and deal with the prisoner population. So with that kind of backdrop and messaging coming from me on May 8th, um, the other part of why I didn't suggest to the governor that we do a supplemental was that there are seven line items that bring in money in FY13. Uh, most of them from my department alone, but in my one-page summary, I think you all saw that we get uh, a little bit of money from an old account in DPP uh, and fame. We get uh, six items in my department, and we get a little bit more that makes the FY13 number have a balance, and that balance of 7.7 .7 is useful in biennium. So if there's a messaging problem from that May 8 communication and my attempt to work with you and your staff before the fact and get it to you as early as possible, I guess I can accept blame, but I don't really feel that there was any attempt at any point in, in the way to mislead you, that we had a problem and we knew it was going to become uh, an issue, 35.3 out of a total of 45.4 million of new revenue is a huge slice of that one good news piece that came out of the revenue forecast. Now, the 28th of May is not a date that I settled on, but let me just so I can back it into and make it all clear to all of you. The DHHS staff, Stephanie and her people, produce a voucher, a cycle voucher, that comes to the controller on the Wednesday uh, evening before it is due to be paid. The controller must assure that there is adequate allotment in the accounts that are involved in order to process that, send it to the treasurer, get the bills, get the checks in the mail, and make that cycle payment, uh, usually on a Thursday. So it's a 24 hour turnaround. And it's critical that we have allotment in those three accounts that I believe are most commonly in need of allotment to pay the main care cycle. When that DHHS calculation came to us as we were working during the first week of May to give the governor a package. It was 33.3 on the cycles, 1.9 on the hospitals, 35.3 uh, 35 in total, and there was a complete backup of all of the Part U offsets that had been put together, all of the assumptions for the remaining cycles in June, and that is the information that Commissioner Mayhew has mentioned uh, we have, and we have had, and have been working on for literally weeks and months. Now, backing up, and I'll stop and see if there are questions, to the 28th, understand that if the voucher comes to uh, the controller on the evening of the 12th, for the first cycle in which we believe we will be underfunded for the main care payments, that is preceded by financial orders after a bill gets enacted, sent to the governor, is reviewed by the governor, either is signed by the governor or allowed to become law without a signature. That's the flexible period of time that we know you have to plan on. Uh, May 28th is the first day after Memorial Day. And clearly, a 10-day clock starts to run if the bill were on the governor's table at that point in time. The financial orders that would be involved in those three accounts are so 
easily addressed that we think we could turn them around in 24 hours. And I've checked to make sure they don't require 30, uh, 30 day waits with you, and they don't. So it's a matter of backing from the 12th when the payments have to come in voucher form to the controller to give us 24 hours to get the financial orders done and the allotments moved and we're in business. But you can't presume that we have a law to work with uh, unless you have a bill that's on the governor's desk and is found acceptable and becomes law. So that's, that's the backdoor chronology that I think is troubling to some of you, but make no bones about it. There are two ways that you can cure this. One is you can have a supplemental budget, and two, you can act on the change package ASAP. And I, met, I tried my darndest to make it clear to you that we were choosing the one single budget bill because we felt everything is a high priority and the three-year sequence needs to be put back in balance first and foremost. And there are so many items still yet to be acted upon that make that calendar and that clock a concern for all of us. Uh, all of us who work in this room, all of us who are watching from the, from the uh, outer world uh, and know that urgencies abound. This is one, this is one of the more immediate, but don't dismiss the, the indigent legal or the mill or that importance of the Board of Corrections getting their money. They also are waiting for action. So two options. You can act now either by dealing with a supplemental that you ask for authority to report out, or if you want assistance, I'm sure the administration can assist in breaking down the very few items in that first column of my one-day my one day supplement and acting upon them as soon as you're ready and getting them to the governor and getting the process in the works. We can work our way through this. This is not rocket science, nor is it impossible in any way to avoid the disruption and dis dislocation that would occur if we let the clock continue to turn and action continue to abound and wait. So I'm, I'm sorry to be lengthy. Uh, my part of the messaging process is I think been clear from the beginning. Uh, I go out of my way to be as clear and as precise as I can. I think I made it clear that the choice for change package was made at our end because we wanted to deal with all three years. But the choice now is in your um, territory as to whether you want to separate 13 and deal with it more quickly. And I think quickly is important and that's the message that uh, we're all trying to convey today. So Commissioner Mellick, as always, thank you for being here. Thank you for your explanation. And thank you for the suggestion for two ways to approach curing this. And I just want to remind you that um, with regard to the change package, we did just have a public hearing on Friday. And after that, that afternoon, we came out and a substantial amount of voting on that change package. So. Yeah, I know, I know you have it. And I think picked up a good case. It is. And interestingly, too, Senator, not a word was said against the 35.3, nor was there a word spoken uh, in any way that says we don't have to do it. So it is, I think, a fact that's been uh, conveyed to you, and I think that, uh, you know, we're just waiting to get it done. Yeah, I agree with you. We've heard from hearing so that was a good way to narrow down those issues. <laughs> Just Friday, though. Um, Senator Fleming, question. Thank you, Ed. A couple of things. If I could ramble on for a second, I appreciate it. I did want to say, first of all, as I said before, I thought that uh, two of the commissioners in this room had the most difficult jobs in state government, perhaps alongside Senator Hill and Representative Macondo. But um, I did want to say that, full disclosure, the gentleman at the mic has been my best advisor many years, and I think he's got a tough job, he's doing a very good job of it, and I, I do recall the communications that you referenced, and I, I think you're very good at communicating that stuff to us. I guess uh, I want to first of all say I am probably one of 13 members of the committee who are very thankful for the $45.5 million in revenue that came in year 13 uh, at this point, and I did want to say that um, uh, my preference Given us some, some the, the rationale behind the dates that we need to, to go along with that. Uh, a bill for 39.3 million leaves us 7.7 .7 million. 
still. Um, and if the, the, uh, the need seemed to be somewhat more than 39.3 million, we've got 7.7 .7 million that uh, we should work with. So there is there's flexibility, I think, on date, and I think there's flexibility on, on uh, you know, how the, how the final tweaks on the, on the numbers might take place. Um, so I, I, I remember when I was chairing the committee that I blew it once because there was a there was a need for uh, for, for, for some funding and I we had a bill at our disposal here in the committee and I used it to, to put together a, a, a bill request and Senator Rosen and I did that and I I think after having done it realized the blunder that the typical process would be the administration goes first and I can remember. Commissioner Millett giving his student a lecture about usually we go first. So uh, I didn't know if there was a preference. The commissioners told us of several ways we can go about this. I didn't know if there was a preference from the commissioner's standpoint, or from the chair's standpoint, how we do that. But I think once we do that, we can kind of be on our way. But um, maybe it won't be quite that simple. But I think deciding that methodology. Um, <laughs> well, as I said, there are, there are two methodologies. He's added a third that I haven't thought about. If you have a vehicle within the committee that you weren't going to use, you could certainly use that. But interestingly, Senator Flood, the Trans Transportation Committee took a different position than the one that you are in today in that um, they knew and they only got to hear their biennial budget last Tuesday but they knew that they had a supplemental need in 13 because the forecast was negative for them. So we talked when we had the public hearing last week, and uh, within 24 hours, they opted to say, don't bother with a change package that covers all three years, give us a supplemental in 13 immediately, and they did that. We actually, um, with Melissa's help and, and the governor's staff sign off, we put together a rebalancing of the highway fund in a matter of 24 hours, and we've got a governor's bill title, and uh, it's in the works and will be forthcoming very quickly. So there's two ways. You can ask for a bill or use one in your in your possession, or you can ask for us to expedite it and simply pull those items, or as many or all of those items on the first column into a separate bill, and, uh, and <coughs> we can consider that option. Thank you for that as well. Senator King. Thank you, Madam Chair, and thank you. Uh, I'm sorry, I was late. I was listening actually since the minute the gavel came down. So thanks to the modern uh, uh, modern technology, I was able to listen on my way in. Um, Commissioner, I have a technical question. I think it's for you. It may be for Chris Nolan, maybe for the commissioner. Which is, um, I know this time of year, and usually once in the fall, maybe November, we do the hospital transfer trans transfer tax payment. 